and then we were going to have that week off and then take off for another nine days <laughs> and it never happened you know Ooh, we're live on facebook we are live on yes, facebook we are live. there you go naki way to go there good job go. naki oh my gosh Nak <laughs> she's host uh technical support <laughs> help desk naki does it like, all I do everything so um here we go so you want to go ahead, Carl, and introduce sure. them. So welcome to the FICA podcast. Uh, we call it the midweek, but it's actually Tuesday. Um, and we have, we're honored to have two special uh, guests today. One is coming all the way from uh, Tennessee. So James Katina um, of the Katinas. James is married to his beautiful wife, Chrissy. Together they have five children, Jackson, Dylan, Haley, Riley, and Levy John. Um, they currently reside in Franklin, Tennessee. Um, James is one fifth of the Dove Award winning band, The Katinas. Um, all of Polynesia is, is saying, yes, we know who The Katinas are. And if you don't, now you do. Um, for over 30 years, they've been touring and sharing their amazing voices um, all over the world. And then we're also going to talk about um, the venture that uh, he's on right now outside of the Katinas. James has launched an online business with a profit sharing platform known as True, True United um, back in 2017. He's officially the top earner of this business community. community. And with his cousin, uh, Ricky Naoteote, they will talk about uh, this amazing journey. And Ricky is... Um, father to Taufili and Pelisi and engaged to Kalisi Christina Toki. Uh, Ricky is a board of direct is on the board of directors for the Emanuelu Samoan Free Methodist Church, where he serves as a local ministerial candidate LMC. He also works with choir, the youth group. That's how we know uh, how we met Ricky and outreach programs. He, um, as you can see behind him on the wall or on the mantle, uh, he's a graduate of San Jose State University with a bachelor's in sociology and a minor in education. Uh, Ricky also received his associate's degree in social science and human development um, in 2018. So that's recent. very hard to go back to uh, to school or not when you're not in your early 20s. That's harder to do. So congratulations. So that is uh, our guest that we are we are happy to have here with us. And Naki, I'll let you take it from here. Did we leave anything out? <laughs> My goodness. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> well, we first met Ricky um, with Poly by Design. We push and promote all kinds of positive Pacific Islander role models and entrepreneurs, which it, what is what you guys are doing. And we wanted to show we want to show Pacific Islander kids that not only are we athletes, not only are we actors, which is amazing, but we wanted to show our kids um, that we do. We're educate, you know, educators. We're business owners. We're teachers. We're, you know, we own, we cut hair. We're radio personalities. We're singers. We're preachers. We're everything. And so, um, we're grateful at this time and age is that the kids have a lot of examples. And so, we, you guys are part of the reason why it's you're making it normal for our kids to see us in these, these phases, you know, um, having your own business and pastors and stuff. So we met Ricky going to visit their church. They were having a church function. Everything revolves around the church. And so um, he was telling us that, well, we want to have him on because you guys are, of course, high pro profile, but he was telling us about a business that he just got into and that he wanted to share because, because of the pandemic. Um, Ricky is thinking that this is a great job for um, our PIs to get into. So um, either one, James, you want to tell us how you started and why and, and, and everything about it? Well, first of all, uh, ooh, I hear an echo of some kind. Um, am I okay? Yes, you're fine. Yep. yep. Um, I just wanted to say first, thank you to uh, you, Naki and uh, Carl for the opportunity. Of course, uh, thanks to my brother, Ricky, for the uh, the outreach. Um, I'll, I'll just tell you, I love any opportunity, whether it's on Zoom or in the parking lot to uh, right. top it up with, with our, our own uh, fellow uh, Polynesians, Islanders, uh, people who are 
just looking to find ways to uh, further our individual purpose, but really uh, what we are and uh, what we stand for as a community, as a people of Polynesia. Uh, I'm so grateful to what you all are doing and, and the exposure that you give uh, so many people. And so there's a lot I can say about uh, this amazing opportunity that um, was presented to me about three years ago uh, in 2017. Of course, I'm a musician. I'm in a band, as uh, Carl uh, so eloquently put, uh, with my brothers, the Katinas. And uh, we've been together for over three decades. So literally just gave away my age there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, aside from that, uh, I've always been intrigued with... Uh, uh, with uh, entrepreneurial opportunities. Uh, of course, you know, my wife is a photographer, so she uh, owns her own photography business, uh, mainly does weddings uh, here in the Nashville area and is doing phenomenal. So technically speaking, um, we are a household of small business, self-employed individuals, and we love the, uh, just the freedoms that, that come along with that. But as we all know, Naki, uh, as one man said, um, no one's going to be more passionate for you than you, right? right. You've got to get up, Carl, and you've got to make the donuts. You've got to right. make the cold calls. And uh, so, but we've always loved that rhythm. We, we've loved the challenge. And about four years ago, I would say, we uh, were just starting to have more and more uh, serious conversations and just really praying about maybe creating another uh, stream. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we weren't necessarily wanting to do a traditional business but just with a lot of these platforms and technology and with the e-commerce space there were just so many things that literally if you just pay attention there's all kinds of opportunities and so that's kind of where we were and we just said you know what let's let's stay open so again about three years ago uh, a very successful entrepreneur presented this opportunity and when i looked at it uh it was simple you know, again, remember, I, I'm Polynesian and I'm a musician, so it's got to make sense. And, uh, and I showed it to Chrissy and she says, well, this might be that thing we were praying about. Yes. And so, um, but she also reminded me, hey, you know, uh, whatever you get into, it, it, you're not going to see a return or results overnight. You've got to put in effort. You've got to put gotta in work. time. Mm -hmm. You know, work. Yes. And I said, oh, absolutely. I, you know, and Naki, you know, I, I was in a place where I wasn't looking to to dabble. You know, if I saw something and it looked, you know, simple enough and scalable, then I was going to dive in. And I did. I dove in knowing that a lot of this I would have to learn on the go. Um, I gave myself eight to 10 months again, because I, I wanted to make sure that I was going to see some kind of proof of concept. Well, for me, it was actually after maybe two months into it. And I told Chris, I said, I think this is it, you know, because I'm on a plane touring with my brothers and we've got this right where, yes. you know, someone said, this is only a smartphone if you could build a business from it. Exactly. So literally <laughs> what I, you know what I'm saying? And so right. I, uh, as they say, uh, the rest is history. I, I'm now the uh, one of the top earners of the company. Um, and I, I say that again, to just say to anyone who might be watching, um, there's all kinds of opportunities in the, in the space of, uh, direct sales or network marketing, there's thousands. It, is, it just all comes down to this simple question. And the question is, what do you want? W what do you desire? Because I really believe Naki and Carl and, and Ricky knows this, that if we can articulate that and answer that question, that becomes the fuel for what you need to build it, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was just my approach. Again, I, I was learning on the go. And even three years later, it's a, it's a very uh, young company in comparison, but it's a, in, in, in a, a very short, basic gist, what it is, is Trinited is a profit sharing platform. So uh, I'd love for Ricky to, uh, th this young man right here, um, he, um, he, he's uh, inspirational because I don't know that Ricky's even been in for more than a couple, three weeks, but he's hitting the ground running. And again, I think this will, anyone who's interested or maybe anyone who's looking for something like um, uh, something that you can build from home, a home-based business, 
I will tell you that what we have here with United, this is actually designed for speed. So I can go on and on, but again, I really appreciate the opportunity, Naki and Carl, to just be on today. Oh, that's Thank awesome. You, Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, Brother Ricky, it's on okay. you. Let's let's tell these people what you're doing. Come on, bro. Well, I, <laughs> before I go further, you know, all honor and praise to God, the Father, you know, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, there's nothing that I go through in this life without acknowledging oh, that part of my, my story and my life. So, you know, praise to him. Um, this opportunity came not within myself, but came through my sister. Um, and my sister, Faia, was kind of like the, the connector of all this because she forced her uh, to sign up in, in this company. Now, she got uh, together with a couple of other cousins from Washington who ha had already started uh, with James and uh, with the rest of the Trunitic family, but had not, my sister Faia, uh, forced to sign me up and I mean signing me up without not without even my intentions of signing up I didn't even know I didn't even I wasn't aware that she had went in registered my name you know ordered my my product and and every, and that was it right and she comes up to me you know when I was eating dinner one night you know with uh, with uh, James on a, a Zoom call and she was like here you got to listen to this you know, it's James Katina. And mind you, you know, we know about the Katinas over the years. And I'm a, you know, like the rest of us out here, we're big fans, right? Christian music is everything to us, you know? And so when I heard that, you know, it didn't take me much to listen because it was like, he's right here, right then. We never had a connection before. Uh, but when he was speaking and, and everything he talked about with the overview of True United and how much it was it made, made sense you know with this time and this era of the covid it was like a blessing in disguise right you it know really i didn't have anything going on like right now still looking for a job and and trying to um um go further my education you know but all of that was slowed down by the pandemic so there i was very limited to the resources However, when I got this uh, connection through my sister, the very next day, man, we sat down, we, um, we, we met, and we kind of mapped out how we wanted to go on about this. And then, it, and then my product showed up about two days after that, and I wasn't even on the call yet, like a direct call with James. I hadn't even talked to him before that. So when I did, you know, we held a, a Zoom meeting, and I and, you know, James did his thing of overviewing uh, the business and gave me a chance to talk, you know, to, to show what I felt about it. I picked up my can. I was like, I'm all ready to go, bro. <laughs> there was no, <laughs> about, you know, there, there was no question if I'm going to sign up or I'm going to register. I already knew, you know, what I wanted to go in. And this platform has given me a chance to to dream big again because of the value that I see in it and the simplicity of how to get there. Because once we, w w once we get you connected and engaged with this, you'll see the simplicity of the business. It, it, it doesn't take much, right? And especially now that we're at home, the, this home-based business is just a, a blessing in disguise. And I, I couldn't thank James uh, enough, you know, to be a mentor and to be a leader. Because everything now that I, as I focus in on my whys and I focus in on my, my goals, you know, it brings me back to my parents. And I reflect back to my parents of the dreams that they had, you know, of bringing us out from our islands of Samoa, you know, our little village of Watia, you know, where my grandfather was the paramount chief and, you know, my uncle now who's uh, sitting on, you know, as the paramount chief, it's like, you know, a reflection that you embrace throughout your, your, your journey. And, you know, it, 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 James had a, a, a sit down with one of the top leaders of uh, Amazon last night and spoke about these the same whys that we're, we're talking about now, right? Because when I connected with Naki, it was like um, me trying to give a resource out to my people, my community. Yeah. The reason why I went back to school was be because I, val I valued my parents' dreams and which was coming out here, 
um, at being educated, trying to help the community at, at large. You know, my dad was the, the, the minister who started up our church in, in San Lorenzo, the Emanuelu Church. We started in San Jose as a very, it was just us, nine kids and my parents. That's all, that's all it was, you know, started up as that small congregation that kind of led up, you know, seeing the growth throughout the years. Yeah. So now that we have this vehicle, now we have this platform, my gosh, you know, I can only imagine once our, our Samoan community and our Tongan community, our Fijian community, all Pacific Islanders, because I, I see an opportunity where it fits. And if it fits, it makes sense to join in, right? And that's all we're, we're trying to do is to get the word out and to help our community have more resources, more than ever. And I think this is it. So that's just a little breakdown now. You know, that's awesome. we, ain't even, we ain't even getting started yet. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that, that's um, so great about the country is there's other countries in, you know, in the world that if you don't have a business model that's recognized um, by the government, then you can't create that business. Like, it's not like it's just wide open like it is in the United States. And sometimes I think that uh, when I lived in Hawaii, um, I remember the Koreans, when I had a, uh, I managed a store that was in the international marketplace. And I remember they were, their thought process was like, I can have my own business. All I got to do is work from open to close, but I can have my own business, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, then the rest was like, get out of my way. If that's all, if, if it's just I got to work or my family has to work 15 hours a day, but it's my own business. Like I right. get a, I get to, to own this and pass it on to my kids and create generational wealth. There's some countries where people come from where there like, just isn't a possibility. Um, and to see opportunities like this, where it's up to you to have it be your dream and work your butt off to get it and do those kind of things. But it's possible. And I think those are some of the things that, you know, we're, we have so many things in the country. Sometimes I think those things get lost um, right. somewhere in the interpretation. I just, um, do you feel like, because, well, what I, the reason why I want to ha have you guys on is, you know, we hear the stories of our community the, because of the pandemic. So many people are laid off and they're searching for, you know, um, extra income or an income and are just looking to, uh, like you can only work at home. So I think this is a great opportunity for people to to help them financially and mentally because there's been pe there's people that have been home since March not working because of the pandemic. And there's a lot of, you know, uh, loneliness and stress and everything going on. But the key factor of everybody's problem is money, unfortunately. You know, we say go to church and pray and God will provide. He's providing you information right now. I mean, I think this is a, a, an open door for people to, to you know, get some, some um, problem solving, get some financial uh, relief. And um, I took a look at the website. It looks like a great opportunity. Um, again, we'll post your uh, website, your link afterwards so that people can um, get a hold of you and look. But are you finding that your, your um, I don't know, your clientele it has been growing because of the pandemic? And then. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing to see, you know, we, we, we can't. Um, necessarily articulate all the factors but i think you touched on several of them i think it's a combination of obviously what's going on in our world in the economy the shift that's happening the concerns um so what we're seeing specifically with united and, and i would say this is happening across the board in the space of network marketing and direct sales or home-based business uh, uh industry is this is on the rise. You can, you can read any financial publication out there. And what you will find is that while it's not mandatory per se, it's almost becoming a necessity for yeah. individuals, for households to find something that you can build from home. Why? Because the home-based business, think about it. This is what we can control. You can't control the stock market, right? Even in corporate world. I mean, people who have you know, busted their tails for 25, 30, 35 years, they're actually looking for jobs. Right. Just because right. of the shift and because of the uncertainty. 
So what we're doing here with Trunited is uh, look at it as if we are in a bubble. We are insulated to where, because we control this. And so what, what's happening out in, in the, the market and the stock market in, in the outside world, it can't penetrate. It has no bearing on what we're doing here. So that's really the message. I mean, uh, the other thing that I love about what United's doing, Carl and Naki, is unlike most, or I, I would say maybe many of the uh, network marketing platforms or companies out there, we're not a, we're not a products driven company. Again, we are literally sharing a a system which is um, a profit sharing platform. So uh, we're we're helping people, and I, I think to to what Ricky was sharing earlier, I think that's one of the reasons why we are um, having such an influx of young people, number one, because young people, they flip residual income because right. they know how to use this, right? That's really the, that's, that's where we're at, you know? So even mm -hmm. older guys like myself, I'm, I'm having to uh, rewire the way I think in, in regards to these opportunities, the technology. I mean, everything is so connected. Here we are in different parts of the country yep. and we're connected. So think about how everything is being expedited and Trunited is not about products as much as it is about an opportunity. So I look at it, even as I share with people, um, it's three steps. It's, it's literally create a free account. Uh, the second step is you're going to set up one of these products to earn back these profit points. And then the third step is just share. Okay. And the sharing part is really where we roll up our sleeves and reach out to people. And we just teach this very simple fundamental, go build relationships, go build relationships. And in today's world, you will be amazed if we listen intently to what people are saying, um, people are looking, as you said, Naki, people are looking for something like this. Not that you can, uh, if this is, I'm not approaching this as a means for me to keep my lights on right now. Right. No, I'm building this into the future. It's very much an investment program. So if people desire that, if they have, if they see value in, in looking into the future, then I, I just really believe we have something really, really tremendous here. Yeah, that sounds, sounds awesome. So it's, it's not a product, it's um, profit sharing. Yes. And then when somebody wants to join, is there a, um, what do you call it? An introduction to you have a meeting for say beginners or people that want to join. You, you know, we we um, again, it's a very organic kind of a system. You know, we don't uh, again, we don't have sign up fees here. We, there's nice. no uh, getting people to get on a, these starter packets. Right. I mean, I, I'm amazed. In in awesome. I've never been in network marketing, but I've learned over the last few years on what a traditional network marketing uh, company looks like. This is, uh, this is not that. This is, to me, this is the wave of the future. It's literally creating a free account so you can use this platform and you launch it as far as you want. You know, we would teach people how to just find six people, right? This is a networking opportunity and you're basically matching on profit points. It would be shares in that world where we're investing in the stock market, we are shareholders. Here, we're profit point points holders, and you you actually get a product back as a bonus. But we're not stocking product in our, you know, house. Garage. Yeah, garage. There's none of that. So I just think for anyone who's looking for something simple, again, and uh, this is this is really the Uber model. You know, Uber eight nine years ago, no one heard of Uber, right? Right. Because that's when they launched. But a lot of people don't realize that that uh, if a person would have invested $50 in Uber when they started, that would be worth over $1.4 million, right? Wow. So wow. We see these platforms just flashing be before us, you know, every other week. And so I think uh, people are, are, are starting to get attuned to realize that, my, if, if I can just cast vision for the future, there's platforms out there. And that's, that's really what we're doing here with United. I remember um, in the 80s, I remember seeing, um, I was house sitting for one of my college roommates, um, 
after we weren't roommates anymore, he had a, a duplex and I was, he was out of town and I was staying at his place watching it for, I think a week. And he had all these different VHS for the young, young people watching. They probably don't know what VHS is, but there was all these videotapes on the wall. And one of them, it said water and millions or something. And I put it in, this was like 85, 86. And it was talking about how bottled water and purified water is going to be billion dollar industry and i remember watching it and taking it out and going that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard like <laughs> who's gonna pay for water it comes out of the tap and then lo and behold you know water is a billion dollar industry and then i think your point about uber is the same way is that you know i think 20 years ago if you just said yeah i'm gonna call somebody up on my phone and a stranger's gonna show up and i'm gonna hop in their car and they're gonna give me a ride somewhere and then i'm gonna pay them for it I probably would have thought the same thing. Like that's right. the crazy, like that doesn't make any sense. So I think your point of, can you see the vision and the concept is really where we're asking, you know, the public and the, the PIs is to see that, you know, to say that water was going to be, you're going to pay billions of dollars as, a, as an industry for water in the eighties was pretty crazy to think. And like in the, the, the concept of Uber and Lyft being calling some stranger up to pick you up at the curb outside, that all sounds crazy, but, the vision, if you have the vision of, of the concept in the future, I mean, it's, it's very, I mean, it could help your life. Right. I love the concept of, uh, that you're talking about with the profit sharing and not ending up, you know, like, and I, not to knock Amway because I know it's been successful for a lot of people, but early on, there was always the stories of some guy that ended up with a garage full of soap and it's not, you know, just <laughs> Amway or any other thing, but it was the idea of I got to buy this product first and then go try to sell it for a profit. Whereas you're saying, you know, it's not, it's not that kind of a, a setup. Wow. Oh, good. Uh, Ricky, you, you're, so you're fairly new to the business. What are you finding is the most, um, or this, what are you surprised about the business that you had, you know, you thought it was this, but it's not. And it, you know what I mean? Like, so I spoke about it just a little bit, which was the simplicity of it. And I think James touched base too. Uh, three step, two product, three step business, right? All I have to do is register, subscribe, and then share it, right? And come to find out, I don't even need any experience in doing this. I don't even, I, I don't even have to be a marketer, right? That's the most important thing of all is that I've been able to sign up people with no experience. That's I've awesome. been able to bring in and share this to, to people that just envision their future, their grandkids, their kids, right? And that's what's been special about it is that all of these people that we're bringing in, they come from all different walks of life. You know, whether you were a businessman before or you were just a, a student, right? We, we compiled everyone together and share this platform and everyone has a, even a, a playing field. You know, you could even, so the part of the business that I love the most is that if you're a hard worker, you're out there to get it, you could easily bypass those that have been in the business for however long, right? It's an equal playing field for equal platform for everyone. So, I, and I think that's what I take from this uh, that's stood out the most is the simplicity. It's how easy you could generate your income on a monthly basis just by doing three steps that's it that's awesome i think that's that's a a lot for people to hear is that you don't have to have any experience in marketing you don't have to have any experience in sales you just got to check it out and go to your link and your website that we're going to share you know, I, I feel some people are scared that it's a marketing company and mm -hmm. then they, they hear it's a marketing company okay i'm about to go sell some products right that's always the, the, the idea that comes to mind when you hear about these companies in which, you know, I don't blame them because I was part of that crowd too, right? I, I had those experiences of uh, trying to sell a product and if you didn't make your quota, you wouldn't be getting paid, right? So I, I, I learned from experience as well, but, you know, just to be experiencing a new platform that just cancels out all those all those things in the back of your mind that could hold you from your, your biggest dreams. And to be in a, a person that can envision yourself a year from now, two years from now,
that's the kind of people that belongs that fits this this platform right here and i think that's why that's why i wanted to reach out to my brother james and be like hey uh, we got we got a connection with Naki and Carl. Man, this, this <laughs> might be it. <laughs> can, can, can you all believe this? This guy's only been in for about three weeks. The way this hey, guy cannot. Is, it's, it's Think amazing. big, right? Yes, Think big. It, it really is. It's thinking big, and I love what you were saying, Naki. It's uh, it's not about products. It's not about selling, right? Here's what it is. It's all about a desire, and and Ricky was talking about that and that's really what we want to convey to people that's why we're interested in in really building relationships first uh, you're never gonna if you go on my facebook page you would never know that i'm a top earner in this company because we don't have <laughs> pictures of shiny products that's just not what we do we build relationships we have conversations we share stories and then we just see if there's if there's an opportunity to just simply ask the question hey Steve, are you at all open to creating a new stream of income? That's literally it. And, uh, you know, uh, while this is for, for everyone, it's not for anyone, right? And so um, we're, we're just excited that we get to help people while, as we say, while we're going after the bag, we in the process are wanting to help others to fulfill their dreams. That's one of the things that Naki and I have found with Poly by Design is um the more people we help get what they want the faster our business grows and we it was one of those you know moments where we were i don't know we we're driving around in the car we were talking about like how can we grow the business like how can we expand our reach how can we and it was let's just start keep hitting let's go hit more events let's go find more people that are doing things let's help more people get what they want and there's been a direct correlation to the growth in our business and our podcast and our reach and everything with how many people we help get what they want. The more people we help, the more, you know, the more we get what we want or what we need. Um, one of the things that's not, not surprising to me though, is the entrepreneurial spirit is obviously Ricky, your family started a church and mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and the Katinas, um, we outed your age. You must have started when you were five because you've been right. doing it for three decades. Um, <laughs> so the entrepreneurial spirit is with you. You, you your family, you're, somewhere you guys have um, have found that. And I guess the question goes out to, to each of you. Um, was it that entrepreneurial spirit? Did, did you see a particular person in your family that was doing that? Or was that something that, that you just gathered, um, you know, through your family, or where did you guys find that that fire to go do things? Even if it weren't the business, you guys have already done entrepreneurial things. Um, so where do where do you guys think you found that? I'll I'll ask uh, Ricky first. Well, with me, I think it was through my father um, coming coming here to the states. You know, he had he had big dreams, he had big goals, right? He had a very good job in Samoa. Uh, working for the government. He didn't have to leave a good situation just to come here and move into a, a house that was, you know, we lived in with cousins, but we didn't own, you know, anything. We kind of like, you know, started out of nowhere. We were we were from the projects back in the mid 80s, you know, back in, San, in the east side of San Jose. So just seeing my father work hard to uh, support his families, my mom was home, you know, in the traditional family, mo mom's always home, you know, taking care of the kids. Uh, my father was out there. He graduated from the Golden State doing, re uh, I think, HVAC, um, refrigeration and all the heating, ventilation and all that stuff, right? And so his, I think his working ethics um, kind of re resonated with me. And then not just my father, my brothers as well and my sisters. Uh, me growing up, I was I was kind of spoiled, you know, in our family. I, my older brother, my older siblings were the ones that that worked more than we the younger ones did. And mom, you know, protected us, you know, um, whenever there was falavlaves and stuff like that, it was always the older ones that had to go out and do the fouls. You know, we were the ones here at home with, with mom. And, you know, we didn't I didn't do much, you know, growing up. So just seeing that resemblance uh, through my siblings and through my dad and, you know, the care for with my mom. I think for all polys, I think we have that worth ethic, right? 
and it could and it could resemble or it could translate into that entrepreneurship because it just transformed into some other type of work we're always working for you know whether if it's hard labor or, or whatever it, the, it may be um we we have it it's in our spirit it's in us you know to work and that's part of you know the ministry that my dad got into you know he just came from one business to another and felt like this was his calling you know with the church and starting it from scratch again you know we didn't have anybody to kind of you know fund fund the church or help out with donations and stuff so it was just our family but you know through the love of god and and his calling and and my dad accepting that call that's what got us here and now we have you know such a beautiful church with with members that are, you know de are devoted you know to god so i think that's what it, it was for me that makes sense work ethic a lot of times blends into the entrepreneurial spirit uh james what and you're three four years old when you guys decided to start the band yeah, exactly. <laughs> where did that come from <laughs> No, I, I want to pick up on, on something that Ricky said, because I, I think it's important. Uh, when you think about the actual meaning, the definition of, of entrepreneur or entrepreneurship, it's not always about a return. It's not always about some monetary uh, return. Really, entrepreneurs, they're givers. Mm -hmm. They are givers. They give of themselves. In our culture, we are very gifted and talented in the dance, in, in the arts, and you know what? We would dance, we would sing, uh, even if we didn't get a penny back, right? So right. think about that. When an entrepreneur comes from that kind of a foundation, when the opportunity comes to get a return, see, that's just icing on the cake, right. in my opinion. And that's why I think we are seeing, whether it's in the, in the area of athletics or in other industries now, and, right. and, and it's just mind-blowing you know, to see people, I mean, hey, how, how many people are following The Rock right now, right? right. Yes, Crazy. charismatic, he's got the whole package, but you know what people love about The Rock? He's genuinely a giver. He's a giver. You know, his whole uh, uh, production company, Seven Bucks yeah. you know, uh, production, right? The idea that we can come from humble beginnings, but we... We're grateful even when we didn't have anything. And I think that spirit in the entrepreneur will take them farther than anything else. Um, as a matter of fact, that's the culture that yes. we're building mm -hmm. here right now with United. It's not a Samoan culture. It's not a Polynesian culture. I will say, though, that the biggest group by far that's invading the space of United are Polynesians. Because I think the culture that United has built and the culture that we come from, there's a mesh, you know, there's a connectivity, there's a synergy. And so uh, I, I, I kind of answered your question, but I really wanted to just not lose sight of, of that part of an entrepreneur. Yes, because when you hear entrepreneurship, you think business and opportunity to create and to generate revenue, that's gonna be there. I just truly believe that if we have the mentality of give to grow, you will not stop the return. It's biblical. It's actually biblical. Mm. Yes. So I don't want to preach, so I'm going to hand it back to you. brother. <laughs> 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 so have you seen um, in your uh, pursuit of your passion in the music, um, have you seen um, that kind of, the same kind of uh, dynamic between the giving and receiving it in um, in music and in song and in um, um, presentation and and uh, art, I guess I would say it's the same kind of dynamic, right? Sure. Again, we um, we you know our dad uh, is a, a, a former Marine and a Pentecostal preacher, so that's a bummer combination. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, so early on, we had this passion, just as little boys, as kids to do music. And again, it was, it was really uh, Carl and Naki just for the love of, of music. Um, we, we would go into the marketplace while people were, were se selling their goods or their baskets of taro or a breadfruit or banana, and we would just be singing out in the open. Um, so I, I think there's absolutely a direct correlation. Um, if people only get into business just so they can make money, 
it's fleeting. Yeah. It, there's, there's, that's an that's a end goal. Um, but I, I think if we get into something knowing, number one, that we believe in what we're doing, we believe in the concept for others, we believe in the product, believe me, all of that self will work itself out. If you and I as a brand are saying, you know what, we're more than just making money. Be because at the end of the day, that's how you know true success. That's how you know true wealth. I mean, the money, I, I believe that money follows ideas. It's not a lack of money more than it is a lack of ideas. And I think if we just tap into, again, who God has called us to be, our purpose, our why, and again, our desire, the desire, that's the seed, Psalm 37, delight in the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart. This is how he created us. We were fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So if we believe the way the creator designed us, there's nothing we can't do. There's nothing we can't do. So exactly. So true. So, uh, Ricky, I, I did want to get into um, your path through academia um, and that it came not when you were, you know, 19 or 20. Um, you're, you've been a, a learner for a long time. Um, so talk about uh, higher education and, and how you ended up there. Um, again, was that something that you saw an older brother, sister, uh, father, mother, like a role model go through? Or was that something that um, you're one of the first to do? Uh, so just to briefly like overview the, the pathway that I got into uh, in my mid thirties, uh, I was going through uh, a time in my life where I, you know, lost my mom, right? 2014, I lost my mom. I was in a, a good, fairly good job here in the Silicon Valley, working for a medical device company out in Sunnyvale. Um, but of course, when something happens in your life and it just, you know, it's a stumbling block where you have to get over, you know, losing a, a loved one, right? Affects you not a, not only physically, but emotionally, deeply, right? Uh, so I went through that experience and I was depressed. I was, uh, man, I, there were nights and, and mornings where it didn't sit well with me. Um, and I just reflected back to what my parents' goals were coming here to the States. And it was just, you know, it was all about education and, and opportunities to have a better life. Um, and so th that's, those were my reflections during that time. And so in 2015, uh, when I got laid off from that job, um, I even became more depressed. And I even thought, you know, my, 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 uh, my thoughts were just all over the place. And I just, it just hit me, you know, of, you know, what my purpose was in life. And that was kind of like something that kind of reignited me to go back to school. Well, I thought about my mother, you know, and my father, of course, he was living around that time uh, when I started. So I decided to go back in the, in the spring of 2016. And mind you, this was late in 2015 when I lost that job. So I started that spring 2016. You know, I set my short term goals, my long term goals of where I wanted to go, you know, and and bit by bit, you know, it was, you know, slowly going. Even then when I was enrolled and I was taking classes, I was even questioning if what I was doing was the right thing. I had two kids and I had, you know, uh, uh, my significant other, you know, to kind of, you know, think about, you know, I'm not in it alone. I'm not young, you know, I'm not in that bachelor age where I, I could just think about myself. Uh, mm -hmm. However, you know, with the guidance and the support of, you know, my spouse and my kids and also my siblings, those were my main supporters. And I think that's important to hold out that, you know, for a person that, you know, chooses to go back and further their education, you have to have that uh, foundation of supporters of, of your main main people and my father, too. So when that happened. My, my father passed away in 2016, mm -hmm. February 2016. And I was getting ready to graduate from uh, from the community college, Ohlone College here at, in Fremont. And so that happened. And of course, 
everything came out. I was going buck wild. I was thinking to myself if I should just quit and just go find another job. You know, it almost it almost happened. Uh, but then again, you know, those reflections of my parents, of their wise of coming out here, my, my dad, my mom, uh, it reached my soul, you know, and that's mm -hmm. kind of the drive that I that got me going throughout that year through graduation uh, at Ohlone. And then just to know that later on that that same year, 2016, I found out I was accepted to San Jose State. So it was kind of God's blessing, you know, to kind of make me think, hey, this is what your parents would want you to do. And, or you could just give it all up and, you know, live life just finding a nine to five every day. You know, so then that's that was the drive. And, you know, my first year at San Jose State in 2018, fall of 2018, I had such a great semester. I ended up taking extra classes in the summertime of, of, the, of last year, 2019. And I graduated early in 2019, late uh, in, in wow. fall. So that was kind of like the, the push that drove me over was it's just a matter of, you know, you knowing where you're at in life. And I think if I hadn't had that extra push from my supporters and also the reflections of why my parents brought, it out, brought us here to the States, I don't think that would have ever happened. So. Awesome. So I think uh, longtime listeners of the FICA podcast that may have heard this story before, but um, we um, had interaction with uh, the church over several different events. Um, and they, the church ended up making a donation to us. And we didn't even know what we were going to do with the donation. And then we decided that we wanted to build a podcast. Um, and we ended up using the donation to buy our headsets for our studio. So if COVID ever gets off of us, we ever actually get back into our studio. Um, when you see the headphones that we have on uh, the church, the donation from the church was what we use for our, our sets of headphones that we use. So um, like I said, if we can never get back into our studio and out of Naki's dining room uh, for our show, we will put those headphones on and every Sunday, um, pick of you brother in the church uh thank you both so much for the for the time so uh <laughs> shout outs to them watching and just to know that if they're back in the studio look for them headsets <laughs> those are from mine you. are not those hard to you. see mine are pink they're very loud so but um we just want to thank you guys and then if people wanted to get a hold of you guys is there a website can we where can they follow you just, just or, follow, follow follow Ricky Naltelte. I have his um, information. Um, so, you know, we just want appreciate your time, and we appreciate the space that you've given us um, to connect. Um, James, I know you guys are. Uh, are you on a break from um, tour? Or are you touring? Or no, we're we are we're doing spot dates right now. So we were just in uh, Austin, uh, Texas uh, this past weekend. We're, we're headed to Dallas this coming weekend. So it's slow moving, but hey, we're grateful for every door opened. Uh, we do, um, the guys and I, on our uh, the Katina's Facebook page uh, every Thursday, we do yeah. just a jam session, Facebook Live. So so join us. It's at uh, six Pacific, uh, eight Central, nine yeah. Eastern, and it's a great time. So. But it's thank you again, Matthew and Carl, for the opportunity. Thank really, you so really much. Oh, you thank you. Thank you. I have I have to admit that I have seen you like four four years in a row. I go to Church on the Hill in Vallejo, California. Oh, pastor Scott awesome. Peterson is my pastor, and so cool. you come to our church often. Yeah. So we catch you every time. And I have your sweatshirt. Just I'm just <laughs> saying, <laughs> fan child here, fan yeah. child. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. So, so much. um, we're gonna hook up. Ricky's um, information, his link on our post. We're going to share it. Share, share, share. We appreciate your time, James and Ricky. God bless your journey. And thank you for sharing your information. And it's totally going to help um, more than mm -hmm. a million people. <laughs> because of this pandemic, we, re we really believe that this is truly going to help thousands of families um, just stay afloat and, and then some depending on how, how hard they want it. 
True Knighted. Thank you so much, you two. God bless you. And thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Ricky, your whole family was on sharing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so they tagged 50 million people. So we appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Family. Have a good evening. <laughs> thank you, you so much. Good night. Thank you. Good night.